Well, here we are, folks. Sorry this is a little bit late for those of you who watch on the Wednesdays that I do these reports. We have a surf report that is basically showing us a psychic overhaul, like a cognitive, it changes the way we think. It's going to cause uh, lots of emotions. And we have a rare hexagram followed by very next day, we have a kite formation. So some unusual alignments here that I wanna talk about. But before we get started, this is our influence chart and we're looking at three different sources the tropical astrology we have the aging out of the t-square in scorpio where the sun is in scorpio we have a last quarter moon uh, mars sextile uranus a lot of uranus stuff in here we're going to have mercury oppose uranus at the end and a grand water trine and we have a hexagram and a kite um, then we have the mental state of the collective, the collective unconscious through the dream bot. And that one is looking at comms and mental states. That's very mercury, if you will. So that's the cognition part of our over overview. And then also the dream bot is looking at willpower, very um, strong and determined. So I'm thinking that there's a lot of grand water trying in here, especially the Mercury trying Mars because Mars is willpower and Mercury is the mental states and communication. So uh, Mercury trying Mars, part of the grand water trine. And then, then we have the I Ching and this is the blue circle here is covering the near, it says nearing completion. Well, that's the last quarter moon and the waning crescent. That's the biggest hit. But also he hexagram. Hexagram, uh, we're going to talk to uh, more in depth in astrology, but it is sort of uh, like as below or as above, so below, uh, sort of a divine um, path, that sort of thing. So very, um, very eaching like. So when we put all these together, put a look at all these circles and we're looking for the main overlaps because what we want is the main influence. And so looking at all those that I just mentioned, I'm thinking a cognitive overhaul, psychic overhaul, and with the grand water trine, massive emotions. All right, let's get going. Big shout out to It's a Modern Mess. Big, uh, well, welcome, Nine Arrows Up. I don't know what I'm watching, but I'm super interested about your, about your process. Well, it does look complex, but we're basically looking at two things in every one of these surf reports. There's a lot more packed in here, but the two things you're looking for is the main influence. What's the main thing? that we are expected to feel this week. And then at the end, we're going to be looking for the set of behaviors that to best enact um, to achieve best success given the energies of that influence. So main influence and what's the solution? If we answer those two questions, then you've got the gist right there. Let's go to the dream bot. And... What's interesting, the number one word with 1208 surge score, that's a huge score, is com. Obviously looking at dot com, like website, but either way, it's communications. And so those red arrows are all about, and there's a lot of them, a lot about comms, excuse me, and mental states. And then the blue arrows are words that describe a lot of willpower and motive. Excuse me, a lot of will, willpower and motivation. All right, so you can look at all that at your convenience. All right, you are here in this little uh, band of gray area. We're right before a new moon in Scorpio. We have just completed how was everybody's Aries full moon. Was it even eventful, not eventful, or what? We are in between, so we're in the last quarter moon there. 
We're in the last phases of energy window number 15. And if you haven't seen the next energy window, it almost covers the rest of 2024, in my opinion, but it's a lot of fire. And I think you need to go see that. Um, it's called energy window 16. So go view that one. It'll cover from the 3rd of November out to the winter solstice. All right, here's your energy chart. So the over, overall influence is this psychic overhaul that causes massive emotions. So I think, and you know, it's, it's kind of, um, it's building as we go throughout the week, but then we have all these massive alignments. The Grand Water Trine is, um, starts on Monday and it only gets stronger. And then we have the Mercury oppose Uranus, all sorts of things towards the end. So I think it's going to be a lot stronger towards the end of the week. That'd be the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and the last three days of our surf week. All right, let's start with, we're going to nail down a lot more details, but remember trying to look for an overall influence as we go through these charts. You're going to see a lot of different things. For example, here on Thursday, the 24th, Lots of things going on. We have the T-square that we've been talking about the past couple of surf weeks. We have the sun in Scorpio. And we also have that last quarter moon because that's defined by moon, square, sun um, on the back side, on the waning side. So we have a T-square, last quarter moon. And the last quarter moon, by the way, happens at 3.02 a.m. on the 24th. It's a last call for your Libra lunar cycle goals. So those were developed for both the eclipse cycle, the six-month cycle, and also the 30-day cycle. Uh, next, we have Mars sextile Uranus, and that happens at 7.12 or 7.13 p.m. Central Time. Um, by the way, the, <clears throat> I want to back up and talk about the T-square. For those of you who haven't seen past surf reports, remember this energy archetype is the pressure cooker, the cosmic pressure cooker, a crucible of immense stress and tension threatening to erupt at any moment. So there's that pressure to dive deep and will have an effect on the psychic overhaul. Um, then we have Mars sextile Uranus, and this is more of the trailblazing, uh, Mars as a trailblazer, but it's, um, compassionate because Mars is in cancer and Uranus wants change and go it alone. And it is also helps with this trailblazing because it's the sextile in between combines the protective mother and the peaceful revolutionary, the Uranus aspect. This archetype boldly forges new paths and a deep concern for the well-being of others. It brings innovative solutions to create more nurturing, a more nurturing world. I don't know why it's dragging that as well, but there's your picture forging new paths and it's for others as well you can see the fire off in the distance and that would represent our next energy window world ablaze if the energy of the energy numbers energy window 16 comes true in a literal sense you'll see a lot of metaphoric fires friday the 25th we have the waning crescent uh, moon is in Leo, so it, these emotions want to be recognized. And we have the sun still in Scorpio with the T-square still uh, waning out. Strong water signature. There's your emotions are just beginning here. And it's the, the, the water, the number of uh, planets in water signs is peaking, but will stay elevated all week. Here's where we have a lot of emotions coming from the Grand Water Trine. Now, this is just the beginning, but we are looking at Mercury and Mars and Neptune. <clears throat> a 
look at, um, start with Mars in Cancer, and we have the Oceanic Warrior, fiercely protective of emotional and familial bonds. We have Mercury in Scorpio. This is the depth psychologist. This is how we start to go really deep into the psyche. And then we have Neptune is the mystical mermaid channels inspiration from the collective unconscious. And you put it all together and you get the deep sea diver. The deep sea diver descends into the depths of the psyche, exploring uncharted waters of the unconscious. Each descent, the diver retrieves buried treasures of insight, healing, and seeds of rebirth. On Sunday, the 27th, we have mutable water, which is going to be the Piscean energy. And this is dominant for the rest of the week. So big change combined with the pressures of squares and oppositions. It produces a big pressure for change. And why change? Well, because of mutable. Mutable is now dominant in the background. Mutable is means adaptable and ready for change, thirsting for change. Here's the, uh, we talked about this in the energy window number 15, but Monday uh, 28th, we have a six-sided star, a hexagram. Some people call this a star of David. And it is a very sacred symbol in many spiritual traditions, representing the union of heaven and earth. If you see this, you've got two grand trines. One of them is water and one of them is air. And they are just superimposed upside down on each other, which creates the six-sided star. The other indicator for a pure hexagram in astrology is that you have sextiles, 60 degrees, in between each point. Now, this one is missing just one sextile. All the rest are in orb for a sextile, so it's fairly fairly tight on this hexagram. It's not just a happenstance. It is um, pretty precise. So that union is the cosmic dance of opposites and the alchemy of transformation. It suggests a time of heightened synchronicity, flow, and opportunity. Ultimately, the six-sided star reminds us of the inherent perfection and wholeness of the universe. When we align ourselves with this cosmic harmony, we become conduits for the flow of grace, love, and transformation, ser serving as shining stars in the great constellation of humanity. Ultimately, the Star of David represents as above and so below, and so it shall be divine order. And then a day later, because that one, the air trine, or I'm sorry, the earth, I meant earth before, sorry, it's a grand water trine, and then the opposite is earth, grand earth trine. Sorry about that. So once the moon transits, it kicks out this other uh, grand earth trine, and now we're left with a kite. So you have the grand water trine, and then you have the two sextiles, and you have a pretty precise um, uh, opposition with Uranus and Mercury. And that opposition will go exact tomorrow on Wednesday. But here you have a pretty tight kite, tight kite, and it's the intuitive trailblazer. There's the trailblazer again. The formation combines deep emotional intuition with innovative thinking to forge new paths. The intuitive trailblazer fearlessly explores unchar uncharted waters guided by almost psychic knowing. They harness the power of feelings and imaginations to disrupt the status quo. That's what I'm talking about. Dis disrupting the status quo and manifest visionary change, even if you feel the face of opposition. In this kite, you may feel a um, profound understanding of hidden dynamics. You might have the ability to pioneer unconventional solutions, 
because the main axis of this kite is Uranus, catalyzing much needed transformation. But to be more exact on the Mercury oppose Uranus, it goes exact. Um, here it is at 25 degrees 57 minutes, respectively, 2557. Mercury is in Scorpio, Uranus is in Taurus. They're perfectly opposed to each other at 514 p.m. Central Time on 30 October. This is the psychic rebel. This astrological aspect ignites an intense urge to break free from limiting thought patterns. This is the shattering of the psychic overhaul. The psychic rebel is a truth seeker of the highest order. So we want to sift through uh, fearlessly delving into the depths of the psyche to uncover hidden wisdom. Might experience periods of mental turmoil, anxiety, or obsessive thoughts as they grapple with the complexities of the unconscious mind. However, by courageously facing their fears and integrating the darker aspects, they undergo a profound alchemical transformation, emerging with greater clarity, greater wisdom, and more self-mastery. Ultimately, the psychic rebel's purpose is to be a lighthouse of truth in a world of illusion. I want to um, kind of summarize that I don't normally do this, but because there's so much of these profound influences this week, let's step back to the big picture. And the big picture, the key themes this week is the visionary activism for self and collective in uh, co-creating and change. And behind all that's the adaption with the mutable. We have, and therefore, alchemizing wounds into wisdom. That's the diving deep into the psyche with Mercury and Uranus. We have deep emotional intelligence with the Grand Water Trine. We have more psychic perception, penetrating communication with all this Mercury and Scorpio, and initiating humanity into a new paradigm of conscious co-creating evolution when we have more of the truth, more of the facts. So here's the opportunities, accelerating psychological and spiritual growth, profound intuitive and psychic development, access to transcendent wisdom, enhanced capacity to midwife transformation in self, others, and the world. So that's why we're starting to get this overarching archetype of alchemical sorcerer. It might be intense. There might be confrontation with personal and maybe the collective shadow as we see some of these news things coming out. Uh, I'm not going to name any names, but uh, it's profound and it is very shadow, taboo topics, and it's all coming out. It might experience a dark night of the soul for a lot of us, especially the more shocking the immaterial is the more chance of having that disruptive worldview thing, like your house of cards comes down and your worldview had everything sorted out and now find out that you had all this shadow stuff going on in the background and didn't know it. So, all right, let's button this up with the I Ching. And this is the influence. This is the first hexagram. So 64 with a change line at three. It's called nearing completion is the last hexagram of the I Ching suggests that the ever spinning wheel of life never reaches a final conclusion. Line three specifically is a transition from harmful entanglement entanglements to a clean success. Though you may currently lack adequate strength to complete the undertaking because it's big when caught in such a situation, enlist the aid of others to help you towards the finish line. Failure to do so could court disaster. So this line three is very important that you remember um, to enlist the help of others. We're going to get that to that in the solution. So lastly, overall, the feeling for the week, 
you it feels like you've made significant progress, but there's still work to be done. It can be bring in a mix of satisfaction and a slight frustration. You're aware that success is close, but not guaranteed. This can evoke a feeling of resilience and determination. There's an encouragement to appreciate what you have now, even as you strive for more. I think that's the balancing as below, as above, so below with the hexagram uh, alignment and maybe some restlessness. All right, before we get into the solution, let's button this up, get into summary mode for the influence. Got the sorcerer down here as the overall archetype, but don't forget we're going deep into the waters with Mercury and Scorpio and Mercury opposed Uranus going down in there. As the pressure cooker T-square finally starts to fade out, it's now time for the deep sea dive into the psyche. Another grand water trine has us, uh, us exploring uncharted emotional waters of the unconscious. We're also at the lunar drawdown phase of the waning, waning crescent moon, and it guides us to both an astrological hexagram, uh, that is divine order and as above, so below, and a kite formation. Hence, this week is energetically stormy, but also cosmically ripe for alchemical sorcery. In other words, finally transforming and putting our collective on the right path. All right, let's get Let's get started on the solution triangulation. And the first one is putting the change line in. So you get hexagram 50. And now, since we're looking at the solution, we're looking for behaviors all across this. We're looking at things that we can get done and do. The cauldron symbolizes nourishment and rejuvenation. So we can nourish others, nourish self, nourish others. And rejuvenation is a returning to one's natural desires and recharges the batteries that comes from making progress towards one's aspirations. That is a perfect match to the waning crescent moon phase, which is all about relaxation, rejuvenation, nurturing. So here's some advice from the I Ching, attentiveness to nurturing others, careful preparation and planning. Proper allocation of resources. Remember, you're at the end of the lunar phase, so that it's not a big time to get started on a bunch of big projects. Slowing reverence for the sacred or divine in everyday activities. Starting to see the value in the mundane. Practicing hospitality and generosity. Seeking wisdom and guidance. The next source of our solution is to convert from the tropical to the sidereal. And on the way, we get the rave mandala. So the last quarter moon is the mile marker. It's at one degree of Leo, the tropical. <clears throat> and then is in 56 of the rave mandala. So we'll look at that. And we also have cancer sidereal. All right, we have our modalities set. So let's start with the rave. That's the wanderer. Line six says, caution. The prudence when linkage has been achieved to honor its new commitments in order to secure its footing. Honesty in expression, living by one's word. Hmm, all right, noted. Honesty in expression. Basically, the, the rave and line... Six caution is telling us to um, be authentic, be genuine. All right, so here's our solution triangulation. We had the cauldron, which is uh, nourishment. We have the rave mandala says walk the walk and honor your commitments. If you say you're going to do something, then do something. But we have the last quarter moon and the waning crescent moon, and we have sidereal cancer. The cancer and the cauldron seem to be a perfect match. So how do we delineate all this? How do we find the overlap? 
The solution this week suggests that we not get too carried away with the typical last quarter moon strategies. Although winding down, self-care, and rejuvenation are certainly on the table, the I Ching, the Rave, and Sidereal Cancer all point to caring, caring deeply about your commitments and attentiveness to other people's needs. In other words, um, there is some... Not requirement. We never require you guys to do anything. This is your own free will. But the suggestion is to not completely isolate this week, is to give a little bit of yourself, but not too much, because that's the last quarter moon we want to rejuvenate, want to maybe be with others and nourish, but not exerting too much in that energetically. So practice hospitality and generosity. You can do that without too much effort, right? While also striving for self-improvement, walk the walk and do what you say you're going to do, but do not overexert due to the last quarter moon and the waning crescent moon phases. Those phases, the last quarter moon and the waning crescent, it's about a week long, actually this surf week. It's a perfect match to our timing here is a big drawdown. It's drawdown energetically, and it's about, you know, taking breaks, rejuvenating, relaxing, maybe introspection, reviewing the the month, the last month since the, the lunar phase started, which is the new moon. Um, but in this case, we want to make sure we do that probably a lot with others or at least some with others, and practicing hospitality and such. The cauldron in the I Ching is a symbol of a large cooking pot that nourishes everyone, not just self. It's big. It's a big pot. It's much more than you can, uh, well, nourish for yourself, and you don't want the rest to go to waste. So consider that spiritually the best way to nourish the collective is to spend this time to replenish your own energy resources. That's a very last quarter moon activity. Topping off your own energy and in doing so provides the ability then to help others and to care deeply and authentically. If you're tired and suffering, it's very hard to care. It just is. It's hard to have tolerance. It's hard to have openness to other people's problems. So the first thing to do is honor this last quarter moon and really rejuvenate. Get your energy levels high. And then if you do have some extra energy, consider caring about others, caring about the commitments that you've made, walking the walk. Okay? Now we have the plant of the week, and I am told by Sean, I read your comments, I need to try to do the scientific name, so here we go, and this is to make sure that everyone knows exactly what plant. I had no idea. Remember, this this plant of the week is brought to you by Sean Elizabeth Nelson, and so I am... I'm going to try to not skip any important things here, but plants of Mars and Pluto, it's Chaga is the plant of the week. This is Anonitus obliquus. How did I do there? The Chaga mushroom grows in the Arctic Northern Hemisphere as a parasite to birch trees. It can also be found in alder, beech, and poplar trees in the same climate chaga corresponds directly to mars and pluto but also to mercury and sedna the trans-neptunian object now in gemini the elements of fire water and air are all represented by chaga and many also correspond fungi through virgo allowing the earth element through the body with intention this week the health effects of chaga tea are known worldwide To include, now, here's our disclaimer. We don't provide medical information or any promises of healing anything, okay? So take this with a grain of salt and do your own research before ever consider putting any of this into your body, okay? Powerful antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, 
immune modulating and adaptogenic anti-tumor and cancer preventative high levels of melanin providing uv protection for the skin lowers blood sugar blood pressure and cholesterol promotes intestinal health chaga contains high levels of oxalates that's not a good thing for some people um Oxalates can create kidney stones. Add cream to your tea to counteract these if your kidneys are sensitive. And the cream, the the way I understand it, the calcium binds with the oxalates so it, it can actively cart out that uh, combination. Otherwise, the oxalates kind of can hurt the sensitive kidneys. Do not use chaga if you take blood thinners or have bleeding disorder without first consulting your profession, uh, a nutritional or doctor professional. Okay, we well, want you to screenshot this. So screenshot this first up here, and then screenshot this, and that way you can have all of it. All right. Our current forced evolution and trips to the underworld, that's this week, are expected to, can wreak havoc on the body's defenses and resilience, causing a myriad of symptoms and disease. Known as the mushroom of immor immortality, the Siberian shamans, Chaga brings a multitude of nurturing tools for good health during your journey and resilience after the jump into evolution. Let the Chaga warrior guide and support you as your transformation manifests. Oh boy, that's a lot, isn't it? There's a lot to consider this week. Here's your next screenshot. I'm going to screenshot the influence, the main influence and the suggested solution. And I'll also post this on telegram. If you're interested in just downloading the picture for yourself, I always love reviewing this day in and day out to get, get my mind caged and focused on what really matters and what to look for. And then since the key to life is in your reactions, particularly behavioral reactions, can also uh, read the solution every day and remind myself when I see this stress coming up, bubbling up, or I have conflict or I have any sort of disruption, that influences my normal reactions, then I want to make sure that I'm reacting in accordance with what best can give me the chance of success this week. And I believe that that is what this best solution is in moderation. All right, everybody. Thanks for being here. Thanks for your support. I appreciate your comments. I do read every single one of them and they do help <clears throat> in the metrics and the algorithm of YouTube. All right. We'll see you again next week for another surf report. Check out that energy window number 16. It's the previous uh, video that I uploaded here. All right. Take care. Namaste.